Alright, hello everybody, and today we're going to be proving the angular sum and difference identities for the cosine and the sine using Euler's formula right here. So what is our goal? Our goal is to redefine the cosine of some angle u plus v as well as the sine of u plus v and later on we're going to be using these to define the differences as well. So since we're dealing with u plus v for both the arguments of the cosine and the sine, why not plug this stuff into this equation right here. So now we have something being equal to the cosine of u plus v plus i times the sine of u plus v. And notice that for this formula here, in the argument of e, we have this theta here, which appears in the argument of the cosine and the sine. So if the argument in the cosine and the sine are u plus v, then we must have e to the i, u plus v like so. So just doing a little substitution pretty much. And remember, our goal was to redefine our cosine and the sine. So why not muck around with this part right here a little bit. Notice that we can expand out that bracket in the exponent to be i times u plus i times v. And remember, one of the properties of exponentials is that you can split the addition of the argument up to the multiplication of exponentials. So we have e to the i u times e to the i v. But referring back to this form right here, we can actually rewrite this as replacing thetas with u's here. So we have cosine of u in this case, plus i times the sine of u. And this part here is exactly e to the i u. And for e to the i v, we're simply replacing thetas with v. So cosine of v plus i times the sine of v. And notice that we've managed to have only a single angle inside the argument of the cosine and the sine, which is really quite nice. So now all we have to do is expand out everything. So we're gonna get cosine of u, cosine of v. So that's this part right here. Let's do the next part. So cosine of u, bring the i out to the front, multiply by sine of v. And then let's do this part next. So add i times the sine of u plus and then cosine of v and finally multiplying this and that together we're going to get i times i which is negative one so we have a negative sine of u and then sine of v so this is a big mess right here but we can actually rewrite this thing a little bit in terms of its real and imaginary parts so its real parts are exactly here and here so we're going to get cosine of u cosine of v minus sine of u sine of v so that's the real part and adding the imaginary part for and factoring out the i we're going to get now i'm going to write this part first so we're going to have sine of u cosine of v and then add cosine of u sine of v and now that we've successfully split it into its real part and its imaginary part we can actually compare it to our original equation right here because remember we said that all of this stuff right here are all equal. All we're doing is just manipulating this exponential representation a little bit. So what is our real part for our original expression right here? It's exactly this cosine of u plus v, which is our real part. And for our alternative expression right here, this part is the real part. So we can deduce from that, that the cosine of u plus v must be equal to all of this junk right here. So first of all, we have the cosine of u plus v being equal to the cosine of u cosine of v and then minus sine of u sine of v and then for our imaginary part for our original equation we had the sine of u plus v and comparing it to this imaginary part right here we're going to get that this is equal to the sine of u cosine of v plus the cosine of u sine of v so uh, yeah there you go those are exactly the two angular sum identities for the cosine and sine and to derive the angular differences all we need to do is manipulate these two equations a little bit. So first of all, let's try and find the cosine of u minus v. So if we want to do that, we can use our original expression right here, but replacing these v's here with negative v's. So this is equal to cosine of u, cosine of negative v. But notice one thing here, cosine is an even function. The cosine looks something like that. So if you plug in a v right here and get some output at the ends, plugging in a negative v will give you the exact same output. So cosine of negative v is in fact the same thing as cosine of v itself. And then we have minus sine of u and then sine of negative v. And sine is an odd function, so it looks something like this. So if you plug in a v here and get some kind of output at the end, 
plugging in a negative V will give you the same output but with a negative. So pretty much we can drag this negative out to the front and this will combine to make a positive and we can just write this as sine of V. So this is the angular difference for cosine and we can pretty much do the exact same thing for the sine. So sine of U minus V, replacing positive V with negative V, we're going to get sine of U, cosine of a negative V, but cosine's an even function, so nothing really happens there. Plus the cosine of U, sine of negative V, but remember sine is an odd function, so that means the output will be exactly negative. So bringing this negative out to the front of this term right here, we're going to get this expression right here. So uh, there you go, those are all of the cosine and sine angular sum difference identities that you have that we derived using Euler's formula right here, so that's pretty nice.